Hello everyone, and welcome to your ninth Apple Debugging Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be introducing the Instruments application and how we can use the Time Profiler to diagnose some of the issues that we might have with the performance of our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just run our application as it is. I'm not even really going to explain the code that is in this uh, application because I want to be able to kind of just determine a lot of this information from the instruments instruments trace that we're going to do. The first thing though I'm going to do is just run the application to see how it performs out of the box. So I'm just going to run this. We can see I'm already getting a beach ball here. And I try to run this. I'm still beach balling and then scroll again. And as you can see, we're just kind of lagging on this same view here while we're trying to load in these images. And if I look at the debugger pane on the left, which I generally like to use as my first indicator for some of these issues, is we could see some pretty high CPU usage initially when I was going through and trying to, so anytime I scroll, my CPU usage jumps to you know, almost 100% in some cases. The other really important thing though is that this memory usage is hitting like four gigs right now. And that's you know pretty insanely high for the amount of images and the size of images that we're showing in, in these views at any given time. So uh, if I wanna find out more information about any of these things, I can always just click on any of these individual tracks and we can see separate threads, kind of the percentage over time. We can also look at the memory, see our peak memory usage was almost hitting five gigabytes and you know for any real application that's, that's a ton of memory to be using, especially for what our application is doing. And um, yeah, so this gives you kind of a, a nice little overview of what um, you might want to change. So out of this information alone, I know that I'm, I shouldn't be bringing in uh, images that I'm bringing in. I, I, because I know this code already, I kind of have an idea of um, why that's a problem. So I'm actually going to go ahead and swap out these two lines of code here. And one of them is basically just instead of pulling in the entire image and putting that in memory, I'm going to first resize the image and then use that as my image instead. So then I have a much smaller memory footprint. Memory footprint. And if I run this again, we can see the outcome. So I'll switch over to the little uh, debug tab. And it's still very slow to load. We still have a lot of beach balls when I'm first coming into this. So our CPU usage is still pretty high, but the memory impact is way lower. We're now sitting around you know, we, we hit somewhere in the 100 megabyte range, but that's, you know, uh, an order of magnitude better than having gigabytes of memory uh, being taken up by, you know, what is about 50 images probably. All right, so that's uh, that's that application so far. So it's just uh, the thing that I was trying to point out here is really just this nice little debug tab that gives you some of these uh, small insights into your application and tracking this memory usage is a good indicator for a lot of problems that you might want to uh, dive into more deeply using instruments. The CPU also being another a case where instruments might be a very uh, good tool to use. So having this little debugger pane open while you're you know hitting issues like this can give you some indication on what your problems might be. So for high memory usage, or for high CPU usage rather, uh, one tool that you can use is the time profiler in instruments. So to access this, uh, there's various ways that you can do it. You can hold down on the play button and hit this profile option. You can also go to profile from the product menu or command I. And there's also options when you're running the application to open it uh, to profile the application as well. What we're gonna do is hold down on the play button and hit profile. So the first thing we see when we launch into this is this is the instrument's sort of uh, starter pane and we can select various tracks that we might want to use to investigate our application. We can check memory allocations, app launch time, uh, memory leaks, zombies, uh, time profiler, various other uh, options as well. And uh, the specific one that we're going to be talking about today, though, is the time profiler, and it's probably the most generically used um, option in you know across all applications. So, time profiler is a great use case for finding where your CPU is doing the most work. You can also choose a blank option and add in individual tracks later, if uh, you you know want to add multiple or forget to add the one that you want. So go ahead and hit choose on this. 
And now we're brought to an instruments uh, window here where we have the time profiler track along the top. It also adds this points of interest track and thermal state, which we don't really care about. Um, if you want to delete any of these, you can just hit the delete key and it'll actually just delete them like that if you don't want to bother seeing them. All right, so the time profiler track is here. And to get started with profiling our application, we just have to hit the record button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to click on our app and try scrolling here. And basically what you want to do is try to replicate the problem that you're having in your application. So I can try to repeat the issues, you know, and here's a bunch of my issues. I'm, I'm blocking on main and, you know, bad stuff is happening. Basically not seeing a lot of the stuff because main is just stalling it. So let's go ahead and pause this or stop it. And so if you hit the stop button, that'll completely stop the application entirely. Uh, if you want to basically continue uh, monitoring it, then you'd want to rather just hit the pause button and then you could resume uh, the instrument tracking later. So anyway, as we can see here, we've got now the time profile on the top and we can see the CPU usage across various cores as well. So here on this top level overview, this is just a percentage of how much CPU you're we're using in total. So 100% represents just the, it would be the full usage if just one core was on. So if you have multiple cores on your machine, you could get up to n times 100 essentially as your percentage. And that essentially maps to what the time profiler is, is telling you here. And as you can see, we're hitting some very high uh, use cases here with uh, the time or with uh, the time profiler. So we should uh, dive into what's going on. So once we've selected the time profiler, we can start looking at what's on this bottom half down here. And there's a pane on the right and the pane on the left. I'm gonna start with the pane on the right and this uh, section here will give you what's known as the heaviest stack trace. And the heaviest stack, stack trace just means the trace that's hit the most often in your application. So we can see here that basically we have our main entry point into the app. And then uh, we've got some of our own code down here, which is resized image. And so it means that, you know, resized image is probably taking the most time in our application. And because this is being run on the main thread, that is a significant amount of work that's um, being done by resized image on main thread, which, you know, is obviously blocking the execution of other UI events that, you know, were scrolling or mouse interaction, etc. So, um, but some things to note on this uh, section here. Um, so let's start off with what the time profiler actually is doing to capture this trace. So the time profiler basically just goes through and every millisecond it's going to take a snapshot of what the current stack trace is. So it's going to look at the whole stack trace of uh, all the current you know, functions or methods that are being called. And that is the snapshot that it's going to take for its you know, individual trace. Then it's going to move another millisecond, take another stack trace, count up all of the instances of the methods that are currently being called, and add that to the current count for each one. So for the the main uh, method, it's main is pretty much always going to be in every single call. So obviously it has the most counts. And as you can see, it has 8,594 in this particular trace that we took. So that means it was basically in the majority of these traces ac across the time that we were taking the slice. So um, just to clarify or sort of clear up how uh, this ends up working, let's imagine that we were just doing this application and we were the time profiler and we were just inside of our viewed load. And at this instant, the time profiler took a stack trace and then we saw, well, view to load was called by, I actually don't know who calls view to load, but view to load um, was called by something in NS view controller probably. And um, then, you know, whoever called that, whoever called that, and eventually it's gonna get all the way back to the main function that started up the app. And so at that instant, the time profiler took a snapshot. And so we have, so far, we know that view to load was called once, and we know that main is also in that call. So we'd have, if we were keeping account for all of the methods currently being called in a trace, we would say that the main function was called once or has uh, one instance in the trace. 
and view to the load also had one instance in the trace. Then let's say that a, another millisecond goes by, and now we're in setup data source. So uh, basically main eventually calls view to load, which eventually calls, uh, well, then immediately calls uh, setup data source, right? And if the time profiler moved a millisecond out and we took a snapshot at this point, we would now uh, keep adding to the existing counts that we had. So at the second millisecond, we would now say, well, we have an instance of being inside of setup data source. So setup data source would have a count of one. View to load, we have to add to that count. So now view to loads count is going to be two. And the main function would also be two, right? So we're just enumerating the counts of any time, every time we take a in individual basically pause at this one millisecond in interval, we just look at all the, the methods or functions that are in the stack trace and we add them to the count of their total instances in the stack trace. So um, one important thing to note about that is means that if there are smaller individual calls that are made between the traces, right, let's just say that um, one millisecond goes by and maybe there was a small uh, call that was made in between those milliseconds. Well, the trace isn't going to be able to pick those up, right? The trace is just saying, I'm looking at whatever was at this instant that I took the snapshot. And if it's not there, it's not there. So there could be many uh, smaller calls between these individual stack trace snapshots. And if the call isn't there, it's not there. So just because something doesn't show in a stack trace doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So that's an important thing to know if you're trying to find a particular method or function that you expect to be in there, it's possible that it won't be because maybe it just never, it, it was, it could be run multiple times, but it just never happened to be running while we were taking the trace. So generally speaking, the, the tr tracing is a lot better at finding longer running uh, instances, so which is okay because it's probably going to try and narrow down uh, sort of the call that's causing the problem to begin with anyway. All right, so with that all said, um, that's essentially how Time Profiler works. We take a bunch of snapshots and just add up all the counts of the instances of each call. So again, in this case, we're saying that the main uh, function here was in 8,594 traces. Then there's these little icons next to each one of these things that indicates the type of uh, call that it is. So main is actually part of our application, so it has this little user icon next to it, and that's why it's in white here. Then anything that's grayed out is some kind of system um, setup. So we can see NS application main here, which is represented by the little cocoa mug because it's part of cocoa. And then if we kind of keep digging down, we have some core animation calls here some more cocoa, and then we come back to our user. So here we can see uh, we're calling from the setup data source. Uh, there's a closure call in there, and that closure is call calling into our resized image call. And this is taking up a, a good bulk of the total number of snapshots. Uh, so we can see that resized image is uh, a pretty hefty call in this case. So that's essentially what the heaviest stack trace represents. It's just the thing that was called the most often throughout the lifetime of this time profile that we were doing. Um, another little thing is that you can uh, flatten out sort of the, um, if you want to get rid of all the system calls, you can kind of flatten it out over here and see sort of the smaller version of what the heaviest stack trace is over there. So that's a useful way of just finding very immediate things to see what is doing the most work during this trace. Now, if we want to get a lot more details, we can see all these same details that we saw from this heaviest stack trace in uh, this little left pane here by disclosing individual threads. So first, uh, we can click on any one of these disclosure triangles here, and they'll just disclose you know, more and more information as we go through them. Um, but the best way that we can kind of dive through this is generally holding down the option key and diving into uh, what is known as a smart disclosure for it. And it'll basically disclose until it finds sort of more useful information. So here uh, we can see that this is basically the trace that we were looking at over in the heaviest stack trace. Here's that call for that closure in the setup data source call. And then we're calling resized image. So uh, we can see that that is one of the heaviest calls from main. So that's the, the ordering, right, is by weight. 
and this percentage uh, represents the um, it's it's the per spent percent of time that it was in a trace. So the number of times that the main thread was found to be across all the traces is 56% of the time. So a good majority of the time, main was actually the thing doing a lot of the work. Um, now with that, uh, if we wanted to just narrow down, right, so here's main thread, here's all the other threads that were read. There's a bunch of image decoding uh, threads that are being spun off here. But we're maybe just interested in what the main thread is doing at the moment. And if we wanted to just select the main thread, we can click this little arrow and it'll readjust the weights so that whatever we click on will become the 100% of the weight. So if we're really just interested in what the main thread is doing, we can sort of dig down and now all the other call, their, their percentages will now be weighted based on how much the main thread was being um, weighted for this instance. So if we're, our main thread is being adjusted from you know 50 to 100%, basically it means every other percentage got doubled, right? So it just it just kind of helps to understand uh, if you're looking to find how much of the total time on the main thread was this thing doing the work, you can see exactly how much percentage-wise uh, that, that, that operation was occurring. So um, now if you're just trying to dig through these, there's different ways of going about this. Uh, one thing is we can see when the percentages change dramatically. So, you know, from here to here, we can see that, um, not from here to here, but from, uh, yeah, from this guy to this guy, right, we can see that we had 82% of the time. And then from uh, this guy, we had 66%, and this one was 15%. If we actually look into each one of these, so we can command click on that, we can actually see that they're doing the same work. They're actually just called for a different reason. And so we can see our, our resized image call. So ultimately, the resized image call is actually doing all the work in here, and it's actually doing all the work in this section as well. So um, that's sort of how you can dig into this. We can see all the layout code, and we have our resized image call here doing 63% um, on that call, but then it was also doing you know almost 15% in the other call as well. So in total, resized image is almost doing all the work on our main thread, which is something we would want to try and offload if possible. Um, some other things that you can use to filter out these sections. So uh, just close this back up here. And if you hold down the option key when you do that, you uh, fully disclose or fully um, collapse all the other disclosure triangles that were previously brought up. Um, you can click on this little call tree section and, and there's various things that you can do to determine um, well, just helps you sort through different information. So, for example, if I select invert call tree, it'll put all the basically the top level functions up to the beginning of our tree. So I can actually see the the decode blocks that are happening down here, and that was what we had said before was basically calling all of uh, causing all the issues, right? So if I turn back off invert, uh, we can see that when we were resizing the image one of the big things that was happening was that we were decoding this JPEG, right? So the reason the, this resize image is taking most of the time is that we're trying to decode this large image that's on disk, and then we're trying to display that in uh, you know, our application. But ultimately, the image decode is what's taking the most time. If you wanted to find that kind of in a quicker fashion, you can invert the call tree, and again, that'll kind of give you what the more high-level um, or the, sorry, the, the further, the top level functions that were being called, it kind of inverts that and gives you a better idea of who was uh, being called the most at the top level. All right, so that's one option that you can do. Another one that I find useful is this hide system libraries call. And hide system libraries basically does exactly what you think it does. It hides the system, system libraries. If I wanted to look at our main thread here, so I clicked on main thread and we can see that 100, if I readjust it to be 100% of the weight and see that our resized image was actually taking up uh, a good portion of this time, right? It's taking up about 98% of the time here. And this separate call down here is taking up 16%. So pretty much all the time is being used by resized image, which isn't great. Um, so yeah, that's uh, kind of what we can glance from this information here. And uh, there's some other options as well for flattening recursion and top functions, but um, I think that's good enough as an introduction for 
how we can see all this. If we ever want to get back, uh, so because we dig, we um, hit the arrow to kind of dig into the main thread, we can jump back out if we just hit this root section here, and that'll plop us back into our entire application as a trace. All right, so now that we know that information, we have gathered that the most time is being taken by this resize image call, and uh, we should be able to go and look at where that is. So the resize image call was in this setup data source closure. So let's go look at setup data source. So if I scroll down here, we've got setup data source. And right here, right, we had that resized image call. And resized image is doing image resizing work, but the main issue that we were hitting, right, was that it was doing all this decoding of images on the main thread. And so an easy way to work around that is to essentially create a background queue where we do this work. And then when we have that image ready and decoded, we can put that back onto uh, the main thread and set that to be our, our image property there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a background queue. So we'll add in this little queue here. Uh, the QoS for it, the quality of service is user initiated and we've got it as a concurrent queue. Then in this section, I'm just going to, um, let's just go here and I have some pre-made code all set up for us here. So what I wanna do is asynchronously, we're going to add this resized image queue to this, this queue operation here. And so on the background, on some background uh, core, it's going to basically be resizing the image. And then we're gonna dispatch that back to the main thread and we're going to add it to the image view. You might notice some of these little uh, tag things that are happening as well. And this is to prevent the image from being set multiple times or uh, the wrong image from appearing on the image view. So basically what's happening is that every time we're dequeuing this particular um, collection view item, I'm, I'm adding uh, one to the, the tag on the image view. And what this means is that when I go to, you know, because this takes some time to actually resize the image and then add it back into the image view at some later point in time, it's very possible that we would have had uh, reuse in the collection view, right? If the cell goes off screen and then we're reusing the collection view, there might actually be a new image that's supposed to be in this spot now. So this uh, tag avoids us from actually setting the wrong image in its place and then potentially overriding that image with something else later. So that's what this tag is avoiding, is that it's, a, it's avoiding the case where we're doubly reusing the collection view item and then the, some old value gets placed in the image view that we didn't expect and then maybe gets overridden later with the, the correct one. And even worse things could happen there where maybe the, the old one actually gets set before the new one gets set and so we'd always have this old image in the image view. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do here is that we should probably make this um, a weak self in here. So we're not creating any cycles. And that should be it. So now that we have our uh, image decoding happening on the background, it should be much faster to start up our application. And it should be faster to scroll as well because we're doing all the image decoding in the background. So now we could, uh, let's actually just go ahead and hit the profile again. And I'll hit the record button. And now we can see that our scrolling is much much faster, right? We're not really, um, we're not stopping like we did before. We can still see that the image loading takes, in, take, takes some time, right? It still is uh, taking some time to actually come in, but it is significantly better, right? The user is not uh, constantly stopping in the application. With that said, if I kept going on this back and forth, we'll actually notice that uh, the application will degrade at some point because we're starting to overload the threads and here I'm already stopping and I can't scroll at this particular instant. So there's, there's various cases where we're basically overloading the amount of work that we're doing on these threads. But um, that's for a different topic on another day. But let's first uh, analyze sort of what's happening here. So we can see that our CPU usage actually is pretty high, but it is spread across multiple cores. So the main thread itself is doing much less work. If I look at 
the percentage done by all the threads across our application, we can see that the main thread is doing very little uh, work overall, right? So the main thread is only about 6% of the total work. Now, with that said, there are tons of other threads doing work. So overall, there's probably more CPU activity being done, but our main thread is uh, safe from you know having a lot of issues. Let me just hide these system libraries, or unhide rather, and we can see that um, now we've we've got some different uh, things that are taking longer on the main thread, but with only 6% of the CPU uh, on the main thread now, we have really avoided the issue that we were hitting before where uh, we're constantly pausing on the main thread. Anyway, there's tons of different things that we can do with instruments, and we'll be talking about uh, many of the different tracks that we can use um, with that said, I actually wanted to mention that you can add different tracks if you forget any of the ones that you wanted. Uh, you can add various ones to this existing instruments pane, and it'll track that on the next uh, record of the application. So if you hit the record button with these new added tracks, it'll then take more information about those particular things that you're trying to monitor. So there's tons of different things instruments can do. It's become uh, much more powerful over time with uh, new instruments added pretty much every year and uh, yeah that's that but this is your in introduction to how you can utilize instruments to track down issues in your application and we'll be talking about many of the other tracks in some of these future apple debugging tutorials all right i'll see you guys next week if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to the channel give this video a like and share it with your friends ways to contribute and additional information are in the description i'll see you next week